Good morning, chemistry students. Today we're going to be looking at the ideal gas law, which is a follow-up to our discussion from the other day looking at the combined gas law. Just for a quick refresher, the combined gas law, I'm going to write it up in the top right corner here just for reference. This was a way for us to look at a gas when conditions are changing. So there always has to be a before and an after. And what that allowed us to do was look at the pressure, the volume, the moles, and the temperature at any one given data point and set that equal to the conditions at any second data point. So what this implies is there has to be some change in the conditions for the gas. Oftentimes when you're reading combined gas law problems, you'll see words like the new temperature. We decreased the volume. You'll see some word indicating that there was a change in the conditions for that gas. So that's our hint for when you know to separate combined gas law and ideal gas law. Because for ideal gas law, the conditions are going to be constant. We're not going to be looking at this before and after snapshot. We're just looking at a single snapshot for that gas. So this is going to be the one main distinction when you're reading a problem to know, oh, OK, here's when I have to use the ideal gas law. Now, the ideal gas law equation is a modification of that combined gas law equation. If I look at that relationship between pressure, volume, moles, and temperature, that still holds true for a single occasion. So I can use my equation here. If I can get my pen to work. Here we go. Pressure times volume divided by moles and then temperature, and I set that equal to a value we're going to call r, which is the ideal gas law constant. Now this r value changes depending on what units you're using. For us, we like to use pressure in atmospheres. We like to use volume in liters. Moles are moles, and temperature is Kelvin. And when you use those four units, the ideal gas law constant comes out to be 0 0.08. 206 and it has all four of those units atmospheres times liters divided by moles times Kelvin those are the four units from the equation so that R value has all four units built into it itself now oftentimes when you're when you're actually seeing this equation solved for it doesn't make sense to have a fraction in the equation so you usually see it rearranged where you multiply the n and the t over so you get the equation PV equals n r t where pressure has to be in atmospheres, volume in liters, n is moles and uh, moles, and temperature is uh, Kelvin, and then the R value is that 0 0.08206. So we can plug that in. And then we just have to remember our only other conversion is to always convert our temperature from degrees Celsius plus 273.15 to get it into Kelvin. So let's do a couple of practice problems together here. The first one's an easy version of these problems. So I've got two examples here, an easy one and then a hard one. And the hard ones aren't that much more difficult. It's just adding extra steps. So the first thing I see, if I have four moles of a gas at a pressure of 5.60 atmospheres and a volume of 12 liters, then what is the temperature of the gas in Celsius? Now, the nice thing is I can already see that all of these units match my desired units for my equation, my R value. So I can just straight plug them in. I've got a pressure of 5.60 atmospheres times a volume of 12.0 liters equals my moles, 4.00 moles, times my R value, 0 0.08206 atmospheres times liters divided by moles times Kelvin, which leaves temperature as my unknown. Now if I just divide over to isolate temperature, I get a temperature that's equal to 200 and 5 Kelvin. I have to round it to 3 sig figs since that's my fewest number of significant figures from the problem. But when I solve for temperature using this, my R value, I'm always going to get temperature in Kelvin. The question was specifically asking for what's the temperature in degrees Celsius. So I showed you the conversion above of how to get it from Celsius into Kelvin. Right? This was temperature to get it into Kelvin. I have to actually do the opposite here. So I'm going to subtract 273.15. And I want to keep my same number of place values. So I'm in the ones place. So my final answer needs to be rounded to the ones place as well, which would get me into a negative number, negative, let's see, 68 degrees Celsius. And that would be my final answer for what's the temperature of this gas. Celsius can be negative. Remember, it's Kelvin that will never be a negative value. All right, let's try a slightly harder one, which is the same exact idea, just adding a few more steps in there. So the first thing we'll see, it says, if I have 216 grams of nitrogen, well, I see an immediate difference from the previous problem. Now it gives me grams. 
Okay, so I have to do a conversion to get grams into moles. And then it gives me a pressure, 1.32 PSI. Okay, pounds per square inch. I could convert that into atmospheres, but that's going to be an extra step. And then it gives me a temperature, 56.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, we just talked about how to convert Celsius into Kelvin, but notice that there's all these little steps that we're adding in. What is the volume of the container in kiloliters? Okay, so we're changing what that final unit has to be. We know volume is going to be liters from our equation. We'll have to solve here. Okay. First thing, 216 grams of N2 over 1. And I'm going to divide this. I want to look up the molar mass for one mole of nitrogen gas, which is 28.02 grams of N2. When I do this quick conversion, I get 7.71 moles of N2. OK, first one, done. Second one gave me PSI. If I use the conversion that are provided, I see that one PSI, I'm sorry, one atmosphere is equivalent to 14.7 PSI. So I can set up a quick unit conversion with that. I take 1.32 divided by my 14.7. I have to keep my same number of sig figs, three, so I get it's kind of a small number here, 0 0.0898 atmospheres. And then my last conversion I have to do here is 56.0 degrees Celsius. And this is all before I've even started solving for the problem. So I'm just doing this all off on the side of my page here, just to stay organized. I add my 273.15, and I get 329.15. But because my initial value is only to the tenths place, that means I need to leave my final answer rounded to the tenths place. So I'm going to round the 0.15 to just be 0.2 Kelvin. Once I have these values converted now, now I can plug them into my equation of PV equals nRT. My pressure. 0.0898 atmospheres times my volume, which is my unknown, equals my moles, 7.71 moles, oops, 7.71 moles of N2, times my R value, 0 0.08206 atmospheres times liters divided by moles times Kelvin, and then finally my temperature, 329.2K. Well, now it's just a simple algebra problem. I can multiply the entire right side, divide by 0 0.0898, and I get a volume. And I would round this to three sig figs, which is my fewest from all my givens. I get 2,320 liters. And again, liters is going to be the base unit from that R value. Now, the problem was asking me to convert this into kiloliters. So I would have to do one extra step where I'm going to convert one liter, where I'm actually going to go one kiloliter, is 1,000 liters. So I'm dividing this number by 1,000. So it's an extra conversion at the very end. And I would get 2.32 kiloliters as my final answer. So it's just adding more steps to the same basic idea of plugging in those variables to the equation. Now that's it for I, the ideal gas law. We do have a cool ca uh, an application to this that we can look at. And this is going to be something that we talk more about when we get into our stoichiometry side of this, which is coming up in the next couple days here. When we talk about a gas, we can use a shortcut that's called molar volume, which is how much space that gas is going to take up, assuming that we have constant conditions here. And you have one mole of the gas at STP. So STP is going to be something that you see coming up a, a little bit more in our notes here. And it's called standard temperature and pressure. These are fixed values that allow scientists to compare gases kind of on equal terms. So the standard temperature that's chosen is zero degrees Celsius. Now, remember, we're not actually able to use Celsius in our conversions. So we're never actually going to plug in the zero. We're always just going to think of that as already the converted value, 273.15 Kelvin. So that's going to be the standard pressure, or I'm sorry, the standard temperature that we can plug in whenever it says, oh, it's a gas is at standard temperature. That can be our value. And standard pressure is going to be one atmosphere. So these two values allow us to compare gases under constant conditions. We can look at them plugging in these fixed values. So the cool part is molar volume, this is the volume a gas will take up when it's at STP. And the cool part is if we have one mole of it, then we can solve for how much one mole will take up. And then we can apply that to the idea of stoichiometry. We can use balance equations to figure out how many, uh, how the volume of a chemical reaction would change. So if I look at my equation, and I've got PV equals nRT, and I want to solve for this for one mole. I'm going to have one atmosphere of pressure. 
I want to solve for what the volume is. I'm assuming I have one mole of a gas. My R 0 0.08206 atmospheres times liters divided by moles times Kelvin, and then my temperature, 273.15 Kelvin. When I plug all this in, you get a volume that's equal to 22.4 liters. And what this tells us is this is the amount of space that one mole of a gas would take up. The cool part is if I had two moles of a gas that's at STP, I don't have to do all the conversions in the ideal gas law. I could use the shortcut of saying, well, if I know one mole is 22.4 liters, then two moles must be 44.8 liters. And a half a mole of gas, 0.5 moles, must only be 11.2 liters. So it's going to allow us to do some conversions later on. But this might be something that you see pop up in a couple of practice problems or your notes. This is going to end our notes on the ideal gas law. Good luck with those practice problems, and uh, we'll talk to you guys all soon.